Hello, and thank you for watching the Computer Science of Dentistry channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use some of the tools in D3 Lab uh, that work very nicely and cleanly and easily with a uh, segmented model, um, particularly one that has been run through the uh, dental segmentation tool in D3 Lab. Now, these tools um, that we're going to be using today uh, definitely do not need to be used on a model that has been segmented or anything like that. Um, it just makes it um, a whole lot easier to do. And um, yeah, that's basically um, the main point here is that it can be done on a straight scan model. Um, in fact, I think all of these tools don't need to be manifold or anything like that. It can just be done uh, directly on the scan um, or a, a base model either way. Um, but uh, regardless, um, these tools work very well with a segmented model, and um, we'll just go ahead and, and show you how they work um, with the model that we have here. Okay, so we'll start by just uh, reviewing our, our model from the prior segmentation tool. Um, each tooth is individually uh, segmented. It's got its own face group, and the only other face group on the model would be the gingiva and the rest of the model base. Um, so that's what our input is going to be for these tools here. We'll start with the provisional crown tool. Uh, it says import a model that you'd like to use the tool with and then press go. Uh, I guess before we do that though, um, probably a good idea just to make a quick copy of this model, rename it to something shorter. Um, just so um, when these tools are done, uh, the, f the object name in the object browser isn't ridiculously long. So that's the only reason we're doing that. Just making a quick copy, <clears throat> changing the name, make it a little bit shorter. And then I think we are, are ready to, uh, to press go here. Looks good. All right. Uh, and then it asks us basically to um, select the teeth that we like to provisionalize. Um, there's a button there to use the uh, Smart Select Brush, which is it aids in selecting uh, an individual or multiple teeth if it's not segmented already. Uh, but ours is, so I can just hit S, get the selection tool, and just double click on the teeth that I would like to provisionalize. Hold on here just for a second. Oh yeah, you can also, just as a heads up, you can change the brush size many different ways. You can hold the space bar down and change it right there. That's what I was doing. You can um, change the brush size by doing it that way. Um, or just in the upper left, you can kind of change it with your mouse there. Um, or you can use the bracket tools. There's several different ways to change the size of your, your brush, but we do it all the time. So it's just nice to know the different ways. Um, now I'm just selecting the three teeth. And we could use the smooth selected boundary like we've done previously, um, but it's actually a, a nice selection already. It's got nice embrasures there. I think if we tried to smooth it, we might get a little bit of like a blunted effect. So um, we'll just keep it like that. And there's a, an input for provisional thickness. Um, default is 0 0.75, but probably it's better to do like one millimeter there. Uh, just for strictly 3D printing purposes to make sure you got a good minimal thickness and everything like that. Make sure it successfully prints. Runs through some steps here and ends up with a, uh, a made solid final model here. So um, it's ready to 3D print and uh, it's a basically just an offset shell of the original model and you can see it overlaid here it's got that nice like checkered pattern which means it's a, a really good exact um, kind of duplicate of that um, exterior anatomy so that that's great you know it helps with um, aesthetics helps with um, occlusion and things like that uh, intaglio clearly would have to be relined but um but yeah it's again a great starting point there so uh, the next thing the uh, next tool I guess we can get into here is the virtual extraction. Click that, and then a, a prompt shows up. And at this point, the 
Smart Select Brush um, will already be ready to go. It's already, the, the, the filters are ready. It's just going. So if you wanted, you could just um, use this like the model. If it wasn't pre-segmented, you could just kind of click around here and do your selection um, to get that tooth. But in our case, again, it's already there, um, segmented, face group, so we can just double click. And we would typically do the complete selection, but in our case, we don't need to. So we'll just do extract selection. And it only um, makes a copy of the model after you hit extract. Uh, better than when you hit the tool, uh, it would make a copy. You know, you don't want all these duplicate copies. So only after you hit extract will it make the copy. And then it does a series of steps here to simulate uh, an extraction while trying to maintain uh, the best it can the anatomy of the adjacent teeth. And also uh, a little bit of trying to simulate what the, uh, like a healed socket would look like um, in the area to the best of, of its ability here. So, and I think it does a pretty good job. I mean, that's that's pretty nice. The, um, it looks like the contours remain pretty well. And again, there's that middle part that um, kind of has a, a slight uh, like dimple to it or an indent to it. Um, but either way, right now, I'm just doing a little bit of face group work here to make things kind of tidy things up a little bit, uh, make it back to what it was originally. So the gingiva select that and then I can just select this other part that was just virtually extracted here, just the gum tissue, and kind of add it all back to the original kind of gingiva face group. I'll do the smooth. And then the create face group. And then all we have to do now is just those adjacent teeth. There's a one or two other face groups that kind of were an, uh, a result of the virtual extraction that we want to add back to the two. So just kind of click those, make sure everything's selected there. And once that looks like it's pretty much just the tooth, we can do the uh, smooth and create face group. Or if you're happy with the selection, you could do just the create face group, but we'll do smooth and create face group. Last thing, we'll go to the other tooth. And again, you don't have to do any of this. This is just kind of like uh, maintaining a clean, organized workspace. That's it. You definitely don't have to do this. Um, it just helps with some other tools down the road, potentially. So um, that's the only reason I'm doing that. Uh, smooth, create face group. And now we're basically back to where we started, um, just minus one tooth. Segmentations restored, and just checking here, that should be the gingiva. Looks pretty good. And I think we are, are good to go. So um, yeah, that's the virtual extraction tool there. Again, it tries to really aim to maintain the adjacent tooth anatomy and also replicate a slight um, healed socket, uh, kind of right in the most center point there. So the only other thing here um, remaining would be the virtual prep tool. I guess we can pull up this the same. Oh, but before we do that, uh, this is the uh, other output of the virtual extraction. It also gets, the original tooth gets, um, uh, segmented out or, um, sorry, not segmented, but gets uh, just made into a new model there. So you can use it for something else later if you want to. You can delete it if you want to, but it's there. I thought it was good to, instead of just completely discarding it, at least copy it and then save it so you can use it for something else if you want to. Um, but, okay, so virtual prep now. Um, we'll use that, um, that virtual extracted model that we kind of repaired with the face groups. And we hit go, and same, t same thing as the other tools. Uh, we just need to select the teeth. In this case, we're just gonna select the teeth that are adjacent to the extraction site. Just a quick check, looks good. You can pick the axial prep reduction in millimeters. Uh, default is one millimeter. It goes through some steps here. And, uh, and then there is your virtually prepped model.
And again, it doesn't take into consideration anything like undercuts or anything like that. So it's not like an ideal prep by any means, um, but it's uh, definitely 100% one millimeter offset shell of the original uh, input scan. So it's just a one millimeter reduction all the way around, does not take into consideration uh, undercuts. And then that's kind of just showing, you know, um, the reduction in comparison to the lower arch. So it's about one millimeter in in the in the right places. Sometimes in the incisal area, uh, if it's one millimeter on both the lingual incisal or yeah, lingual incisal and facial, all those things combined can make a little bit more, um, a little bit more than than the one millimeter. So it could be more than that incisally. But uh, if you put the provisional over it, like I just did, it looks great. You know, um, the it has the exact same. It's all based off of the um, the original scan data. All the external components of everything that was generated is based off the um, original scan data. So it's super accurate, um, and it, it just looks it looks good. You know, um, so that's the uh, virtual extraction tool, virtual prep, and the uh, provisional. So. Again, thank you so much for watching, and um, if you wouldn't mind, like the video, subscribe if you're not already, and uh, have a wonderful day.